Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A logical and a systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSIR net. In the module 6, organic reactive intermediates generation, stability and reactivity of carbon ions will be seen. I am Professor Balaji, currently working at School of Biotechnology in Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha, MHRD New Delhi. So, in this session, what we are going to learn is basically the stability and the reactivity of carbon ions. So, let us look at the first worked out problem. So, the question here given is among the following compounds, the formyl anion equivalent is the first one is acetylene, second one is nitromethane, third one is ethyl chloroformate and the last one is 1,4 dithane. This question was asked in 2011 net examination, December 2011 net examination. So, how to solve the problem? We will draw the structures of the various compounds. The first one acetylene structure is given, nitromethane structure is also given, chloroformate, ethyl chloroformate structure is given here and 1,4 dithane structures are given here. So, what we are going to look at is the acyl uh, formyl anion equivalent. So, this is the formaldehyde unit. So, the formyl anion equivalent is the one we are going to look at and this when reacted with the uh, electrophile gives a, a carbonyl compound. So, this is the reaction we are going to see and between the 4 A, B, C and D, between the 4 given compounds which one can act as the formyl anion equivalent that is what we are going to see. So, here if the formyl anion has to be formed means we need a anion that is a negative charge. So, when this acidic proton is removed from the acetylene we get the acetylide derivative as given here and the nitromethane we have a methyl group which contains 3 hydrogen atoms one, one, one of the hydrogen when it is removed we get the anion as given here. And in the case of ethyl chloroformate, actually the chloride ion is the one which is the negative charge or the anion. When the chloride ion is lost, we actually get a carbonyl with the positive charge. So, from that we can clearly say this is not the acyl uh, formyl anion equivalent that is not at all going to be the one. So, that we can rule out and the last one is the 1,4 dithane. So, when one of the methylene hydrogen is removed from the cyclic structure, we get the corresponding anion. So, we have 1, 2 and 3 anions are there. So, between these 3 anions, which one is going to be the formal anion equivalent? That is what we are going to see. And the formal anion, when we talk about it has to add to the electrophile to give the corresponding derivative. So, here the nitromethane is the compound which reacts with the electrophile to give the corresponding electrophile substituted product as given here and this can be converted to the corresponding ketone unit. So, we are going to see a new reaction which is called the Neff reaction. So, in the Neff reaction what happens is the nitroalkane when treated with the base generates the nitronate salt and this nitronate salt on treatment with an acidic uh, reagent gives the carbonyl compound. So, we are looking for the carbonyl compound. So, here if one of the R, R 1 is equivalent to hydrogen, so that is going to be the formyl anion equivalent. So, here the electrophile added we can assume R 2 is the electrophile that is added and HCO unit this is our formyl anion equivalent. So, the nitromethane derivative or the nitroalkane derivative can be converted to the corresponding carbonyl compound. So, that is how we can say the nitromethane is a compound which is a here 
nitromethane is a compound which is the formyl anion equivalent. Now, you may also have another question what happened to the acetylide derivatives. So, when we talk about the acetylide anion, this acetylide anion basically undergoes nucleophilic substitution reactions with alkyl halides or carbonyl compounds. So, we cannot prepare a carbonyl compound from this particular anion. So, that is the reason acetyl acetylide anion is not the correct substance for the formyl anion equivalent. So, the nitromethane is the only thing which can be converted to the or which can be treated equivalent to the formyl anion equivalent. So, if you look at the next problem, this is also very similar. In the previous case, we talked about the formyl anion. Here, this is a acyl anion or acetyl anion. So, in this case, instead of nitromethane which is given in the previous one, here we have nitroethane and a base that is compound first uh, uh, MCQ's first choice. The second one is alpha chloroacetonitrile, third one is the ethyl magnesium bromide, the fourth one is acetyl chloride and triethyl amine. So, this question was asked in June 2012. So, here the between the four choices which one is the synthetic equivalent of acyl anion or acetyl anion. So, from the previous one we can easily deduce that the nitroethane may be the probable one. So, let us work out uh, what are all the different compounds that will be formed. When we treat nitroethane with a base we end up with a anion. So, one of this methylenic hydrogen was removed by the base to give the corresponding anion. When we treat this chloroacrylonitrile derivative, so here again the chloride anion is formed. So, that means this is not the acyl anion equivalent. And when we talk about ethyl magnesium bromide, we have the ethyl unit which is having the negative charge and the magnesium is having the positive charge. And uh, when we talk about the acetyl chloride also, the chlorine, uh, chlorine is removed as a chloride anion. So, that means this is also not the acyl anion equivalent. Here we have a carbocation. So, this is not the anion, but it is a cation. So, that means uh, between A, B, C and D choices. B and C choices cannot give the anion. So, they are ruled out only A and C are the two things which can give the anions. And we have seen earlier also uh, methyl uh, nitro, uh, nitromethane actually is the formyl anion equivalent. Here we have nitroethane which is the acyl anion equivalent. So, here we can say the electrophile can add to this anion and we end up with uh, this particular nitroethane derivative with the electrophile and this on treatment uh, when it undergoes Neff reaction as we have seen earlier. So, this particular bond is cleaved and we end up with the corresponding carbonyl compound. So, here we have the acyl unit CH3CO unit is added. So, we can say this particular and a nitroethane is a synthetic equivalent of acyl anion. So, the next worked out problem is among the following synthetic equivalent, what is the acetyl or acyl anion equivalent? So, this question was asked in June 2017. Here again we have uh, similar compounds like what we have seen earlier. The first one is acetyl chloride. Here we have acetonitrile instead of chloroacrylonitrile and we have 1, 3 dithyene and also finally, we have the nitroethane. So, since we have seen earlier also nitroethane is the acetyl anion equivalent. So, we can clearly say this is the one, but uh, we will still go through some of the ways by which the anions are actually generated in the four compounds also. As in the case of acetyl chloride, when uh, we treat with the base, the chloride anion will be lost. So, we have a carbocation, uh, acyl uh, cation. So, this is not the uh, correct one. So, we can rule out and when acetonitrile one of the methyl proton is removed, we end up with the anionic derivative and in the case of 1,3-dithane, the central uh, methylene hydrogen if it is removed that we end up with the anion as shown here. And of course, we have seen about the 
nitroethane derivative. So, we can clearly say nitroethane is the one which is the acetyl anion equivalent and the rest of the things uh, A, B, C are not the acyl anion equivalents. Of course, we will study about this 1,3-diethane in the later part where this can be used as the anion or umpalong reactions when we talk about. So, here we see uh, how this can be used for the synthetic manipulation. So, this also is considered like a anion equivalent, carbanion equivalent. So, the next worked out problem is we are going to find out the correct order of basicity of the following anions. So, this question was asked in December 2019. So, we have the nitromethanes uh, anion, we also have the acetonitriles anion and we have trinitrophenols anion, phenoxide or the oxide anion and we also have the para nitro carboxylic as benzoic acids anion. So, we have four different anions and we are going to see the correct order of basicity of all the four things. So, here four choices are given. Uh, before we uh, look into what is the answer, let us look at uh, various resonance structures that are possible. So, to solve this problem, we are going to see how each anion is actually stabilized. Based on the stability, we are going to predict what is going to be the basicity. So, anion stability versus basicity is the one we are going to see in this particular case. So, we have the nitromethane uh, anion uh, is given here. So, here the negative charge can be uh, shifted towards the electronegative oxygen atom. So, this is as we know oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So, it actually pulls the electron towards itself. So, that the negative charge is shifted between carbon and the nitrogen bond as shown here. So, we end up with the one of one resonance structure for this compound. And similarly, when we talk about the acetonitrile, acetonitrile also can undergo a resonance structure as shown here. But in the case of uh, nitromethanes anion, so we have two electronegative oxygen having negative charge. So, this is quite a stable species. And uh, when we talk about the nitrophenoxide uh, derivative, so here we have three nitro groups present on the aromatic system. So, each uh, nitro group has two electronegative oxygen atoms. So, we can see the resonant uh, delocalization of the negative charge over the entire aromatic system. So, we have three nitro groups and as we can see here, one of the nitro group is involved in the uh, resonance stabilization of the negative charge and here the second nitro group is also involved in the resonance stabilization. Similarly, we can also write for the third nitro group. So, that means we can write plenty of resonance structures for this particular compound and the last one is the para nitro carboxylate anion. So, here we have the carboxylate anion. Similar to the phenoxide anion, the carboxylate anion also can undergo resonance with the para nitro derivative as shown here. So, in other words, what we can say is all the four derivatives can undergo resonance stabilization. And in fact, this is A, this is substrate B, this is substrate C and this is substrate D. So, of all the things, C has the maximum number of resonance stabilization followed by D, followed by A and finally B. So, as we mentioned, when we are talking about the basicity, the requirement is availability of electrons. So, wherever there is resonance, that means there is a delocalization. In other words, the electron is actually distributed over an entire molecule. So, it is not freely available to be act like a base. So, that is the reason wherever we have less number of resonance stabilized structures, those cases here are going to be the most basic one. So, in other words, what we can say is the basicity requires availability of electrons and uh, when we have more resonance structures, that is going to be less basic species. So, in that case, we can say B is the having the least number of resonance structures or as shown here, we have only one resonance structure. So, this is going to be the most basic unit followed by the nitromethanes derivative and then comes the 
carboxylate derivative and finally the phenoxide derivative. So, B A D C is the right order of basicity for these four species. And let us move on to the next problem. So, here the major products A and B, what are the major products that are formed in the reactions? A reaction sequence is given in the first step we are using a LDA lithium diisopropyl amide that is used in two equivalent and in the second step allyl bromide is used in one equivalent. These two reaction leads to the formation of an intermediate A that intermediate A is further reduced using lithium aluminum hydride to give the compound B and we have to identify what is compound A and what is compound B. This question was asked in December 2011. So, here four different combinations or four different choices are given what are all the different products A, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we have four different uh, type of products which are possible. We are going to find out which is going to be the correct combination. So, now we are going to look at how the reaction actually proceeds. So, the first step when we treat with LDA is when two equivalent of LDA is used the major product is the kinetic enolate that means uh, less substituted anions are formed basically. So, here we have two hydrogen atoms and in the terminal we have three hydrogen atoms. So, when we use a strong base it abstracts one of the hydrogen here similarly it will also abstract another hydrogen from the terminal. So, we end up with the corresponding lithio derivatives those are given here enolates these are basically lithium enolates that are formed and since uh, we are using a LDA the major product in this reaction is a kinetic enolate that means less substituted product will be formed and uh, then this undergoes reaction with the allylation that means the second step is the allylation reaction. So, the anionic uh, charge attacks this allylic uh, carbon and with the concomitant loss of the bromide anion. So, that leads to the formation of a carbon carbon bond between the two carbons. So, one from the beta keto ester and the second one from the allyl bromide. So, this carbon carbon bond is formed and once this carbon carbon bond is formed the next step is actually the hydrolysis one or the work aqueous workup. So, uh, the aqueous workup of this particular intermediate leads to the enol formation as we know enols are quite unstable. So, they quickly undergo tautomerization to give the corresponding carbonyl derivative and uh, finally, this carbonyl derivative this is having two carbonyl units one is the keto group another one is the ester group. So, these two carbonyl units are reduced by lithium aluminum hydride to the corresponding alcohol. So, we end up with the diol. So, this is our final product. So, from this we can say what are all the intermediate A and the final product B. So, we can say this is the intermediate A which is formed by the reaction of two equivalent of LDA and one equivalent of allyl bromide with uh, methyl acetoacetate. So, this is uh, basically the beta keto ester. So, the allylation of the beta keto ester leads to this corresponding intermediate A which on uh, hydrolysis or aqueous workup gives the corresponding enol derivative which undergoes uh, tautomerization to give the carbonyl uh, ester and that carbonyl ester is reduced by lithium aluminum hydride to give the diol. So, this is our final product. Let us move on to the next problem. So, in this one the major product formed in the following sequence is we have the silyl methyl ether and the hydroxy derivatives are given and this is reacted with potassium hydride. Potassium hydride is a strong base and that is the first reaction and the second reaction is reaction with MCPBA that is meta chloro per benzoic acid peroxy benzoic acid. So, this is basically a epoxidizing agent. So, the second reaction will lead to an epoxide. The first one we will have to see what type of reaction it will actually form that we will see. 
okay. Basically here in this particular case this will be giving a elimination reaction. So, this question was asked in the December 2013. So, there are four different types of products are formed. So, the reaction with the potassium hydride gives a alkene and that alkene is epoxidized by the MCPBA to the corresponding epoxide. So, that is the reaction. So, here we have both the hydrogen atoms are below the plane and in this particular case both hydrogen atoms are above the plane. So, that is how these two epoxides are formed and here in the starting material we have two hydroxy units. One of the hydroxyl is pointing above the plane and another hydroxyl is pointing below the plane. So, between these two one of the hydroxyl is lost to give an alkene and uh, the epoxidation uh, leads to the corresponding epoxide derivative. So, here we are going to see this choice 1 and 2 or the options 1 and 2 are formed when the above hydroxyl group is removed to give the corresponding alkene and uh, MCPBA leads to the epoxide. In the second options 3 and 4, so there the below hydroxide group is removed by elimination and we end up with the corresponding epoxide. So, the epoxide can be above the plane or below the plane. So, that is how we have two different products. So, now we are going to find out which hydroxyl group is actually eliminated and which side the epoxidation takes place. If we can figure it out then we know what is the correct answer. So, let us look at how the product will be formed. So, here as uh, we know potassium hydroxide is a strong base. So, when it is a strong base it abstracts a proton and now uh, I had given here it is the axial hydroxyl is losing the proton. So, let us look at the structure of this one like uh, here we have the hydroxyl group which is pointing above. So, this is what is called the beta bond or above bond. And we also have a hydroxyl which is pointing towards equatorial position. So, this is in the axial position. So, this axial hydroxyl is the one which actually this hydrogen is the one which is being abstracted by the potassium hydride and not the one which is in the equatorial position. So, we will see why uh, this one actually happens. And if you look at the distance between the silicon atoms, so we have a silicon atom that is a trimethyl silyl group that is present here. This is in the above the plane. So, if this is actually the beta bond, so this is uh, above the plane. As you can see this is in the equatorial orientation and this is above the plane. And when an elimination has to happen, we need to see where the two groups are actually present. So, in this uh, second step what happens is the alkoxide anion intramolecularly within the molecule attacks the trimethyl silyl group. So, this is what actually happens. So, that means the attack of this O minus uh, ion happens on this silyl group and this leads to the formation of a cyclic system a four membered a cyclic system is actually formed and in this particular case the methyl uh, the trimethyl silyl group and the oxygen both are in the same side. So, that is why it is called the syn periplanar arrangement and this syn periplanar arrangement actually undergoes elimination reaction. So, the uh, silicon oxygen bond is formed and we end up with the alkene the product is eliminated as a trimethyl silyl ether uh, corresponding with the oxygen uh, derivative. So, this elimination takes place from the same side. So, that is what why it is called the syn and they are in the same plane. So, that is why they are called periplanar and generally uh, in a cyclic uh, cyclohexyl system anti periplanar arrangement is one of the major criteria for elimination reaction. Since we have a silicon unit, the silicon actually facilitate the syn periplanar elimination in this particular case. So, we end up with the alkene derivative. So, once we get the alkene, what is going to be the next step? The alkene undergoes epoxidation using MCPBA. 
since the hydroxyl unit is uh, pointing below the epoxide can only attack the double bond or the alkane from the top. So, that is the reason we end up with this corresponding epoxide unit. So, this is attacked from the same face of the double bond and we end up with this particular product. So, what is going to be the major product in this reaction is we start from a silyl ether and that silyl ether when treated with uh, potassium hydride and the MCPPA we end up with the corresponding epoxide derivative. So, when we move to the next problem the products A and B in the following reaction sequences are a carboxylic acid is given this is reacted with uh, chloroformate and uh, in the presence of a base we end up with the intermediate A that intermediate reacts with the cyclohexylamine in the second step to give product B. So, this question was asked in June 2014 and we have to identify what are all compound A and B, 4 choices are given here. Let us work out what are all the reactions and what is going to be the actual product. So, when we treat an acid with the base, we are going to end up with the carboxylate anion. So, this is the first step the benzoic acid when treated with the triethylamine gives the carboxylate anion and once the carboxylate anion is formed this will react with the methyl chloroformate as given here. So, the negative charge attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon with the concomitant loss of the chloride ion. So, that leads to the corresponding carboxylic carbonic anhydride product. So, this is the carboxylic acid unit and this is the carbonic acid unit. So, these two are the final combined to give the carboxylic carbo carbonic anhydride derivative and this particular carbon is the electrophilic carbon and this is being attacked by the nucleophilic uh, amino group and this, this leads to the concomitant loss of this particular unit and uh, finally, we end up with the corresponding amide derivative. So, this is the amide unit that is present in this molecule. So, a carboxylic acid is converted to a amide using this particular transformation. So, there is a review article about the chemistry of chloroformates. So, that details uh, various such reactions for the conversion of uh, how chloroformate in this particular case methyl chloroformate can be used for various functional group transformations. So, those are discussed in this particular review article anybody who is interested can actually go through this. So, the next worked out problem is the correct combination of reagents that are required for the effect of following transformation or conversion. So, the first one is what is the reaction here happening is we are only introducing a iodo unit. So, what are all the different reagents that can be used for this particular transformation? The first choice given is iodine and nitric acid. The second one is secondary butyl lithium at minus 78 degrees centigrade followed by reaction with potassium iodide. The third one is sodium ethoxide followed by reaction with IH2CH2I. So, diiodo derivative. And the last one is secondary butyl lithium at minus 78 degree followed by the diiodo derivative. So, this question was asked in June 2014. So, what happens is basically only an I2 or one iodine is introduced in this one. So, uh, we generally assume that okay, I2 and HNO3 is the simplest one where uh, this can actually give the final product, but unfortunately this reaction is a very, very a difficult reaction which uh, cannot happen on the aromatic system. So, if you look at uh, this one, this is a aromatic system. So, aromatic system undergoing iodination reactions are very, very difficult. So, we need to look for some strong reagent. So, let us look at how the product will be formed. Before we look into the product formation, we also need to know how the reaction actually proceeds. We have a hydrogen in this aromatic system, this has to be removed by a base. 
and what should be the strength of the base that will decide whether this hydrogen will be removed or not. So, here is a various bases given and their pKa values are also given. When the pKa matches with the acidity of this particular hydrogen atom, then only that hydrogen will be removed. So, if you look at sodium ethoxide, the sodium ethoxide has a very, very uh, comparatively very milder base and uh, here the pKa is only 16 and when we go to potassium tertiary butoxide that is little bit uh, stronger base than sodium ethoxide. When we go to sodamide, it is uh, quite uh, stronger base compared to sodium ethoxide or sodium uh, tertiary butoxide. LDA is very similar to sodamide and the sodium hydride also is uh, very similar. So, in other words, uh, the combination of uh, sodamide or LDA or sodium hydride, they all have more or less similar pKa values. So, they are good for a a uh, little bit relatively strong hydrogen or acidic hydrogen can be removed by this particular uh, basis. When we go to the butyl lithium, butyl lithium pKa is close to 50 and uh, secondary butyl lithium is close to 51. And why we have to see all these things? Because we have a hydrogen which we are going to remove has a pKa of 43. So, any base which is having a pKa lower than this value cannot displace this acidic hydrogen. So, that is the reason in this table if you look at very carefully only n butyl lithium and the secondary butyl lithium are the two bases which are strong enough to abstract this particular aromatic hydrogen atom. So, we can clearly rule out sodium ethoxide is not the base which can be used in this particular transformation. So, here the first step we have to use secondary butyl lithium. So, the secondary butyl lithium replaces or removes this particular hydrogen atom to give the lithium derivative and this lithium derivative is reacted with the diiodo derivative with the, here the transfer of electrons are given here and this gives ethylene as one of the product in this particular case. So, for this reaction to happen that means the iodination to happen it is basically the formation of ethylene which is the driving force for this particular reaction. So, we can very clearly say a strong base like secondary butyl lithium abstracts the phenol, uh, proton from this uh, benzene system and phenyl system and that reacts with the diiodo derivative to give the corresponding iodo derivative. So, these combinations are secondary butyl lithium at minus 78 degree C and the diiodo derivative or the reaction conditions for this particular reaction. Let us move on to the next one. We are going to look at the next worked out problem number 9. So, here the question is the products A and B formed in the following reaction sequences are. So, the sequence what is given is we have a carbonyl uh, ether and uh, the first step is reaction with the LDA that is lithium diisopropyl amide and the second step is reaction with the propyl derivative, iodochloropropyl derivative. We end up with the compound A and the next step is the Grignard reaction followed by hydrolysis to give compound B. So, this question was asked in December 2014. So, here four combinations or four choices are given A 1, 2, 3 and 4 are the four products. So, in a couple of products the chlorine is actually retained in the final product that is one set and in other two cases iodine is retained in the one of the intermediate, but not in the final product. So, let us look at how the products will be formed. So, this is the starting material, this is treated with the LDA, LDA will abstract a proton because this is a strong base. So, this will abstract a proton. So, the first step is the formation. The first step is the formation of the carbon ion. This carbon ion can actually undergo enolate formation. So, we end up with the enolate anion. So, this is the first step that is actually happening when we treat uh, 
this corresponding carbonyl compound with LDA. So, the first step is enolate formation. So, once the enolate is formed, this enolate displaces the iodine atom by SN2 reaction. So, this is the first one because between chlorine and iodine, iodine is a much better leaving group compared to chlorine. So, this enolate displaces the iodine by SN2 reaction and then we end up with the corresponding intermediate, first intermediate is formed. So, this first intermediate is reacted with the Grignard reagent that is methyl magnesium bromide in ether, a dry ether as a solvent followed by acidic hydrolysis. So, all these things here we have a carbonyl unit and we are doing a Grignard reaction. So, the methyl unit is added to this particular carbonyl uh, unit and we end up with the tertiary alcohol that is formed here. And during the acidic workup, the ethyl ether is also hydrolyzed to give the corresponding hydroxy derivative. But if you look at here, this is nothing but the enol unit. So, when we have an enol unit, what will happen? Enol undergoes tautomerization. So, we get a carbonyl unit or the ketone is formed and this ketone on elimination leads the final product. So, we have the hydroxy unit here and we have a hydrogen atom here and this can undergo elimination. So, we end up with the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl system. So, this is the driving force for the elimination reaction to give the final product. So, overall reaction if you start with the starting material is treated with LDA followed by treated with the chloroidopropyl derivative and we end up with this particular intermediate that is A and this intermediate A undergoes Grignard reaction followed by hydrolysis gives the enolic unit which undergoes tautomerization and this tautomer that is the keto derivative can easily undergo elimination reaction to give the final product. So, here the driving force for the final elimination is the extension of conjugation. So, then we can say what are all the final product A and B are the products formed in this particular reaction. And let us move on to the next one here this worked out problem 10. We are going to find out what is the major product formed in this particular reaction. We have a symmetrical molecule, we have two carbonyl or the ketones, here also we have another ketone. So, this is uh, all are basically methyl ketones and this molecule is uh, symmetrical on this side and we have one another carbonyl unit there. So, this is treated with the base, sodium ethoxide is the base that is used and when we treat this uh, tricarbonyl compound with the base, what are all the product that are going to be formed that is what we are going to see and we are actually going to see what is the major product that is going to be formed. So, this question was asked in November 2020. So, let us do the step by step analysis to find out how the product or different products are actually formed. So, here we have three different types of hydrogen atoms, one hydrogen atoms which is attached to the central carbon and we also have hydrogen atoms attached to the carbonyl unit that is the methylene unit here. This and this are more or less or these two are one and the same type of uh, hydrogen atoms and we also have terminal methyl hydrogen atoms. So, we have three terminal methyl hydrogen atoms. So, literally what we can say is we have three different types of hydrogen atoms in this particular molecule. So, the base can abstract all the three different types of protons or hydrogen atoms. So, first let us look at when the blue the hydrogen which is represented in the blue arrow is removed. So, we end up with the carbon ion as shown here. So, this carbon ion can undergo condensation reaction. So, here if you look at uh, there is a nucleophilic carbon and we have electrophilic carbonyl carbons. We have three or rather two different types of electrophilic carbonyl carbons and if you look at the distance 1, 2, 3, this is only 1, 3, another one is 1, 2. So, 
an intramolecular reaction is not at all possible in this particular case. If at all this undergoes a condensation, this can only undergo intermolecular condensation. So, which is going to be a highly complicated mixture and we may not get a single product. We are, we are going to end up with a mixture of products. So, then this is actually we can rule out this may not actually lead to any reasonable product. So, the second one is the pink one, the hydrogen which is represented as the pink one. So, here we can remove this proton by the base. So, we end up with the anion as shown here. So, here again this is the nucleophilic site and we have a electrophilic carbon atoms. Here again if you look at intramolecularly 1, 3 attack is quite difficult. Similarly, 1, 4 attack is also relatively difficult. So, in other words what we can say is this molecule or if this hydrogen is removed that also will not lead to some reasonable product. We will end up with a mixture of product. And what is the third one? We have the third one which is the terminal methyl hydrogen atoms. We have three terminal methyl hydrogen atoms. So, we can see if any one of them is removed how we are going to get different types of products. So, let us remove the one of the terminal uh, hydrogen atoms. So, we end up with an anion here. Now, this is the nucleophilic site and we have various electrophilic uh, carbonyl carbon. So, one at the fifth carbon, the distance from here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 1, 5 carbons are there and also we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. There is also another carbonyl unit. So, we have two different types of carbonyl carbons are there at 1, 5 and 1, 6. Let us see what is the product we will get when the 1, 6 attack actually takes place. So, when the 1, 6 attack that means the nucleophilic carbon attacks this electrophilic carbonyl carbon. So, we end up with the cyclic structure as shown here and we will be having a corresponding hydroxy unit. So, this hydroxy unit can very well undergo elimination reaction to give this corresponding E known. So, this is one of the product when the 1, 6 attack takes place. As we mentioned, we also have a 1, 5 because 6 membered and 5 membered rings are possible in a, uh, in these kind of condensation reactions. So, if uh, the 1, 5 attacks takes place, then we end up with this particular product. But between 5 and 6 membered ring, 6 membered rings are more stable compared to the 5 membered ring. So, we can say this product is going to be the major product and this may be formed as a minor one. So, since the question asked what is the major product, we have to say this is going to be the major product. So, the next problem is we are going to find out what is the major product formed in this particular following reaction. So, here we have a base which is potassium hydroxide is used as a base and this question was asked in December 2017. Four choices are given, two are having eight membered ring and two are having six membered ring. So, we have two different types of products and we are going to find out which one is actually formed. So, let us look at uh, the first case. So, as we know the base can abstract the acidic proton. So, what are all the different acidic protons that are present here? Let us look at the first one is the this methylene hydrogens. This is a acidic hydrogen. So, this acidic hydrogen can be removed by the base. So, we end up with the anion here and this anion can attack the carbonyl carbon as the cyclization is shown here. So, here we are going to see the number of carbon or the number uh, how it is going to attack. Let us start from here number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, this is again a 1, 6 attack and this 1, 6 attack leads to the 6 member ring formation and since uh, we have a carbonyl unit here and the hydroxyl unit in the beta carbon. So, this can very well undergo elimination reaction because we have a proton here. This leads to the alpha beta unsaturated system. So, this extension of conjugation is the driving force for the elimination to occur. So, we end up with this particular product. So, this is one of the product. Now, we also have another anionic site 
which is this particular methyl carbon. So, if this is the place where the anion is formed by the strong base, the base abstract the methyl proton, then we can also get a nucleophile here. So, this can also undergo intramolecular cyclization. So, let us draw the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, when this cyclization or the internal intramolecular attack takes place, we end up with a 8 membered ring as shown here. So, here again we can follow the same arguments what we said earlier. So, this hydroxy unit can be lost as the can be lost to give a alpha beta unsaturated derivative. So, this is the driving force for this elimination to occur. So, we have two different products, one is a 6 membered product that is possible, another one is a 8 membered product possible. But according to the stability, what we can say is 6 membered product is the most stable one. So, this is the major product that will be formed in the reaction and this will also be formed, but it will be formed in minor quantities. Since the question asked what is the major product, we can say this 6 membered ring product is a major product in this particular reaction. So, the next worked out problem is given here. So, here we have to identify what is the major product formed in this particular reaction. So, we have a bicyclic system and the first reaction is reaction with methyl iodide the second reaction is a reaction with a strong base. So, the basic or the anionic reaction is the second one given here. Now, we are going to find out what are all the different products that are possible and what is the product that will be formed in this particular reaction. So, this question was asked in December 2016. So, we have a cyclopropyl system, we have a <coughs> oxyrane system and these are all the various uh, three membered rings that will be formed in this particular reaction. We are going to see how the reaction actually proceeds. So, the first step is the reaction with the methyl iodide. As we know the sulfur is a better nucleophile. So, this attacks the methyl unit and we end up with uh, this kind of uh, intermediate that is formed in this reaction. So, uh, the displacement of the iodine takes place and we have a hydrogen atom attached to this uh, methyl unit and the next step is actually the reaction with the strong base. So, potassium tertiary butoxide is a strong base. So, this strong base abstract this uh, hydrogen atom. So, we end up with the anion on this particular carbon atom. So, a methyl, methylene carbanion is formed in this particular case. So, this methylene carbanion can actually undergo intramolecular attack. So, this attacks this double bond here. Why it should attack the double bond here and not here? Simply because we have a electronegative oxygen atom. So, this actually pulls the electron from the double bond towards itself making this as a delta positive charge. But to compensate that this particular double bond is actually shifted towards this one making this particular carbon more electrophilic in nature. So, that is the reason the negative nucleophile attacks this bridgehead carbon atoms. So, then that leads to the intramolecular product. So, we have a cyclic intramolecular product that is formed and this is quite unstable because sulfur is having a positive charge. So, in the charge reversal step, the oxygen puts the electrons back towards the carbon oxygen bond and this double bond actually goes and attacks this particular carbon because the sulfur wants to take the electron towards itself to neutralize the positive charge it is having. So, we end up with the ring opening of this system which leads to the formation of a three member ring or the cyclopropyl system and this is how the reaction actually proceeds. So, the next worked out problem is we are going to find out what is the correct structure of the intermediate which leads to the product because here the product is actually given, but what is asked is what is going to be the correct or the appropriate intermediate that gives the final product. So, here again if you look at we have a sodium hydride which is a strong base. 
this question was asked in June 2016. So, the starting material is given, product is also given, but we have to only propose a probable intermediate what is actually formed in this particular reaction. So, here we have four different choices. Let us look at uh, how we are going to identify the right product. So, the first step is the base abstraction. So, base will abstract which hydrogen atom? This is the most acidic hydrogen atom in this particular case. So, the sodium hydride will abstract the alcoholic hydrogen and not the of course, this hydrogen is also acidic in nature, but uh, the alcoholic hydrogen is much more acidic compared to this particular uh, CH uh, hydrogen. So, that is the reason sodium hydride will first abstract the alcoholic hydrogen. So, we end up with the alkoxide anion that uh, oxide anion is formed and there is a nucleophile or the negative charge here and we have a carbonyl carbon. So, the carbonyl carbon is electropositive in nature. So, the nucleophile will attack this electrophilic carbonyl carbon. So, that is what happens and once this happens, we get a, a bicyclic system as shown here and uh, here the oxide is oxygen is having the negative charge or oxide anion is formed, but this oxide anion is uh, quite uh, not stable because we have a nitrogen with the positive charge. So, that means, there is a minus charge one place at a plus charge another place. So, the charge transfer is actually facilitated in this particular case. So, what happens is we actually can transfer the electrons from the oxygen to the nitrogen atom through this bond shift. So, in this particular case what happens is that uh, negative charge comes between carbon and oxygen bond and uh, this internal uh, the bridgehead carbon carbon bond actually breaks with the concomitant loss of the trimethyl ammonium ion which is lost as the neutral molecule because that uh, positive charge is neutralized by the shift of these bonded electrons. So, we ended up with the uh, monocyclic system with the alkene unit. So, this is how in this particular reaction the product is formed. 